coming in the morgue? A full-bodied apparition? Grab a snack and help us unpack all that and more. It's time for the series premiere of Ghost Files Debrief. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan Bergara, and that thing over there is my colleague Shane Madej. Shane. Hello. Each week here on Debrief, we're gonna be taking a look at our most compelling evidence, behind the scenes moments, and answering your burning questions. And this episode of Debrief is sponsored by Casetify. Hey, it's me, Shane. You know, from Ghost Files. I'd like to take a moment to thank Casetify for sponsoring today's episode. Sometimes we're out in the field, Ryan's out there being like, oh, let me take a picture of you. And he goes, oh! It happens. And for this very reason, we use Casetify to protect our phones. You're saying, Shane, why should I use Casetify? Well, listen, Casetify uses EcoShock in order to protect phones from falls up to 11.5 feet. That's very high. EcoShock is five times the military standard. The cases are durable and slim enough to fit into my back pocket. But if you don't believe that, I'll test it for you right now. Get over here. Here we go. A real world example of me climbing a ladder and then looking at my phone. Huh? Whoa! There's not a scratch on that. Let's get back inside. Casetify has a huge variety of different cases with amazing designs from over 300 diverse artists. There are also cases you can customize to your own tastes or with your name. This one says Watcher. Isn't that nice? Which makes your phone fun to look at and harder to steal. And on top of all that, Casetify is committed to sustainability. Use the link in the description for 15% off your order today. And thank you again to Casetify for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to the debrief. Oh, thank you, Case Defy. Well, series premiere. Series, series premiere. premiere! How do you feel? I, I'm very glad it's out there. Me too. You I, tried to leak it several times. I didn't try to leak it. You had to duct tape I wanted, you to your office chair. That was one time. Yeah. That's one time. But now it's out there, people are loving it. Yeah, and look, I'm just excited you guys finally got to see it. Everyone here at Watcher is really proud of it. I haven't surveyed each of them individually, but I would assume that all people who work here think it's a good show. He's got it scheduled. Um, He'll be knocking on your door soon. I will be scheduling one-on-one -on -one soon, so yeah. if you're watching this, employees of Watcher, keep that in mind. But uh, happy you guys all saw it. I'm gonna really enjoy watching all of the comments and the feedback over the weekend. Speaking of the premiere, we got quite a bit of evidence in it. Uh, let's take a look at some of that, huh? No, we got a lot quite of, ev of evidence, we got yeah. We got a lot of evidence. A lot of and evidence. You know what? Without further ado, yeah, let's get into our first section of debrief, evidence. Let's start with that humming that we heard in the morgue. Can we play that clip? <laughs> Take it away. Are you hearing that? Yeah, a little bit. Are you hearing that? Tell you what. Why don't we move to the sphere? To there was another. What, really? Yeah. Tell you what. That's a hum, folks. One of many times throughout this series where Ryan is so locked in his own brain no, with would... fear, your fear cage. Fear cage. That I had to point out moments to you, which I'm trying to do as a, you know, I think, I think I want to preserve a little bit of your fear this time. So yeah. I've seen some people in the comment, obviously this is not me just saying, I swear, I, just, I still don't believe in ghosts. Um, I've seen a lot of people who say, well, even Shane was scared by those things. I wasn't because I don't believe in ghosts. But I, I mean, you say it in the app, you do say like, if I were to believe in ghosts, I would certainly be scared by that right now. Exactly right. And I would be if I believed in ghosts, but I don't. Alas, so, you don't. <laughs> unfortunately, I don't. But um, when I'm stuck in my fear funnel, it is helpful. It's that... nice to point it out to you and let you marinate in it without doing like a little, ooh, I bet it's a little horse walking by outside. I will say that I did hear the first hum. I didn't hear the second The hum. second hum, right. The second yeah. hum no, I did you were not attuned. Hear. You were attuned. The second hum was a little more smaller. It, it was like, oh. Yeah, the first one was like, mm. and this one was like, yeah. Oh. It was like the noise that that lady makes when she drops the heart off the Titanic. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, it Maybe like it was that. that lady. Could have been her. She probably got tuberculosis. I would love to hear what you do think it is. 
Uh, you know, it's it's uh, the thing about Waverly. Last time we were there, and this time too, it's, all the windows are open. It's a big creaky old building. There's a chance it was a door moving around or a wind. <laughs> Sorry. Um, classic. For everyone loves that old unsolved. Classic. I mean, there's it's a thousand way. things it could be before it would ever be a ghost. But we didn't hear that hum anywhere else I in know, the investigation, and it was in the moment when we asked for something to hum. Yeah. And it's in a place where people have also heard humming that sounded like that hum. I know. It was great. It was baller to get that in the first room, in the first episode. That is crazy. You'll see, I'm sure there's other episodes this season where we don't get as much evidence. It was very fortuitous that this was our series premiere, and it was an absolute banger when it came to, you know, clunks and clunks. That's true. We're always going to show you what we do get, and uh, sometimes that's not a lot. And you, you might see that pop up throughout the season, but this first episode, certified banger. Anyways, let's move to our next piece of evidence. Uh, we have the dog bone REM pod session. Can you tell us what happened to you? How about this? Oh, Jesus. Whoa, what's going on? Is that you by the pod? Step away from it if it's you. Oh, shit. Okay, if that was you again, could you please step back towards the uh, bone, please? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, step away now. You step away now, please. Step away from the bone. And that was that. Pretty cool responses here. We need to get that response from a, a new piece of tech. Well, the thing is with these kind of devices, you're always looking for things to be timely and respond in a way that seems intelligent. And in this particular case, it's doing it. I felt like that was very much something that was convincing that I was talking to something and they were communicating to me. Um, I like the REM pod because I like the fact that you could demonstrate how it works with a human, showing them kind of break that field. So do you legitimately think the REM pod was a, a ghost of a, a dog? Or it could, or could it, it was so intelligent, it could have been maybe a, a person crawling around on the ground I think on all fours doing I think, some puppy play. No, well, no, I don't think they need to be crawling on the ground to, to make the REM pod go off. I think I it was the guy who fell down the shaft with the dog. Oh, okay. Because I don't think man. the dog is like saying, like hearing me say, step towards that if you understand yes. And the dog's like, Okay. Step away. You right. got it. Yeah. He's not yeah. doing that. I was imagining like a bloodhound too. Big That's cool. Ears. Um, um, yeah. The the REM pod. Uh, it's interesting. It's a fun toy for folks like you. You know, with the with the cracks in your I brain. Mean, you uh, can see <laughs> when somebody is getting near it. It has it picks yeah, it up. Yeah, cool. it's cool. They're not. Fun. I don't. I know. It's yeah. And there are other locations where we use it throughout the season where absolutely nothing happens. So yeah, it's nice. Fun, fun think, little toy for you to lose your mind, you know? I forgot this is the show where my blood boils. <laughs> it's the, 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 the Ghost Files hero episode, the one you just saw. Uh, that's the one where we're kind of cordial. It's in this show where the gloves really come off. Yeah, I mean, I'll still be doing this over here. I'm a little more respectful on Ghost Files just for the sake of having a good time, but uh, I'll still be insufferable over here. That's good to know. What else we got? Uh, let's move on to the Estes Spirit Box session. Uh, there was a moment, and this is kind of what was fun about you know this episode, was there were so many things that happened that we didn't actually react to everything that happened. And this is one of those instances, I'm over there, I'm saying the things that I'm hearing, I can't hear any of the questions that Shane is asking. Uh, I believe I say, uh, what is that? You know what, let's just show the clip. Okay. Uh... What is that? Uh, this is a, an Osmo. It's a sort of like a gimbal box. Yeah, sorry, my Osmo is be... What the fuck are you doing, Osmo? So you can see in the clip, I say, what is that? And then Shane goes, oh, Osmo. And then it says box. Box. Which is like what the Osmo kind of looks like. And then the Osmo fails, which is just like oh. a really cool moment that I obviously I couldn't see that because I couldn't even hear you. So like, there's no way I would be able to point that out. That's true. And even in watching the edit, it didn't occur to me. And it was actually uh, Mark, our director, who was like, "That's a little weird that it says box, and then it shuts off after you know getting a response." I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, in in defense of other things, the uh, Osmos. T I mean, those things are garbage. They fail all the time. We don't use it after episode one, right? <laughs> it, does, it does call it box, though. I mean, that's pretty cool. There's a countless uh, behind the scenes of us on Unsolved of me going, come on, you little piece of shit. That's true. That's true. That. No, that's fair enough. You know what? That's fair enough. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I'm not. I, Still I, exciting. Also, I got to say, love the Estes method. I know a, lo a lot of people were very excited for us to do that. I had the time of my life doing it. We do it 
uh, several times throughout the season. Always a blast. No, it's a it's it's a way for the I guess you said it in the episode for it to be uh, tolerable. We I think we both kind of tried different flavors throughout the season. In this first one, I was going really aggressive because I really couldn't hear anything, so I was trying to project. I think later in the season, I take more of a sort of calming approach and just kind of close my eyes and just gently deliver the words. So you'll see a nice spectrum. No, yeah, I'm, I'm sure people will be looking out for that. Um, Is this the kind of show we're going to be doing here with this kind of sass? I don't think there was any sass there. I, I'm like sure there's going to be some people that are out there going, love the arc. Well, let's move on to Timmy's balls. Roll the clip. Here we go. Season premiere. What are you doing? All right, now that's what I'm talking about. All right, Timmy. I'd love for you to send that back. Should we go find the ball? Yeah, I think we ought to. Where did that ball go? Timmy. Tim. Here's the white ball. They're right next to each and other. here's the blue ball. Blue now, ball? If anything, now I'm really white impressed ball. that we got the ball to land. Yeah, really nice. It looks like they're little prizes for us. As you can see from that clip, this is something that I, for whatever reason, didn't react to on location. Shane even points it out saying like, oh, they landed right next to each so other. So many things that pointed out. I'm telling you, I was in the fear funnel. <laughs> I know. It's actually funny because, and we'll talk about the balls in just a second, but... Uh, we always I, do. I feel like even when we left, by the time the first edits of that episode came in, months later, uh, like when I saw the hum footage, I was like, oh yeah! Yeah. That happened. Like we left there being like, it seemed like a pretty good episode. Like not even registering all the things that occurred. There were, there. I think it was one of those things where so many... Uh, pieces of evidence were occurring live that we weren't really used to that. So uh, yeah. I don't think we've been in a building that was that active before, honestly. So it was just kind of hard to, to, I guess, react to all of it. But I will say, after looking at it, I was like, how the hell did I not react to the fact that I kick a ball down the hallway and then I throw a ball, which you see as hard as I can, and the two balls land directly next to each other, centered perfectly in adjacent doorways. That's almost as crazy as the ball landing under my name. And when you couple that with the fact that you hear noises coming from down the hallway before we go to find the balls, it's pretty fucking creepy. I'm sure people will talk about it in the comments. I don't know because we're filming this an hour and a half after the episode has aired. Do you think it's more than coincidence that those balls were next to each other? No, I don't. You what? don't think that someone placed them there? <laughs> no, I don't. Why you don't would that's you even, even ask me that? I don't know. I mean, I, I thought maybe I, so you'd the, be like, the, yeah, I do. The shuffling was like the ghost being like, oh shit, they're coming. Uh, what, what, what scare? Put these balls here. I think, what if he was like this? Oh shit, okay, where's the Ryan? Where's the Ryan on the wall? Yeah, you know what? Oh, not near him. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why is the ghost hiding? Isn't it, just, it translucent? Oh it yeah, he just, he just does this. He just goes. Oh. <laughs> he just goes in translucent mode, I you like know? I like that. Uh, no, I... I am always kind of weirded out when people, like even the your name on, or the ball under your name moment. Good stuff. I, yeah, good stuff. It's just, you know, <laughs> yeah, more likely that a ball would roll somewhere than, uh, you know, ghost. I just think it's it's just interesting that yeah, the two times we've done the ball toss there, strange things have happened both times. You don't think that's a little strange? That's great. It's great for content. It's good know? tube. It's good tube. Fair. You're a tubeman. I am a tubeman. That's true. Anyways, let's move on to uh, the, you know, this is probably what a lot of people are going to be talking about. Uh, the Shane Solo apparition. Is it an apparition? Is it not? Let's watch the clip. A little better, you know, on account of uh, the way of the world. But, um, you know, now we're doing our own thing on Watcher, so that's pretty fun. So I guess it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, do you want to play? Y'all want to play a fucking game? You little punk. Now, there's a crazy story behind this. We had had this episode done months ago. Yeah, a long, long time ago. And uh, the night before, we were just doing a, a routine kind of quality control check over the episode to make sure things were good to go for the premiere. Well, I want to say even before that. Oh, yeah. It, so I went on that investigation. I came down and I tried to tell you, and it was very difficult to do because I've done this on almost every solo investigation. After I'm done, I usually try and seriously make you understand, and I'm always lying, 
that I that I saw something, that I heard something. Yeah. Oh, Ryan, I'm not kidding. There was something up there. So when I genuinely did hear something, which again, to me, the place is full of open windows. Can you describe what you heard? Honestly, I don't remember. It was like it was enough to make me go like, oh, it was a noise. Oh, I, which by the way, actually, we do. Before you get into that, we do have a clip of uh, some of the noises that you did hear. They may be your footsteps, but one in particular is kind of like a louder thump, may once again be your footstep, but you seem to react to it in your face kind of like a... Hmm, maybe that's it. And, I and honestly it, don't remember the moment. And but... the thing is... Oh, oh was... Wait, take a look. That's actually what got me to find the figure. Okay, so we went on it, I tried to tell you it happened, and then we looked through the footage and like couldn't really find anything. And then the night before. The night before, I had not personally <laughs> scrubbed through that Shane Solo investigation. And I don't know what possessed me to think, you know what, this is a good time to just take that upon myself and look. And so I found some noises and I was like, oh, that's weird. That's not enough to put in the episode, honestly. So I don't think that's that. But I was like, you know what, I'll just, I'll just scrub through it frame by frame to see if I see something in this particular section because there was noises. And sure enough, you see that little kind of white cloud-ish looking thing go right behind Shane. It moves behind him. And the, the where it moves is the doorway where you see the figure. You can watch it all in slow motion, goes behind him. Then he turns around, you see that thing, if you want to call it that, I believe it's a thing, a figure standing in the doorway. And then right after that figure is seen, Shane hears the little bump and then he reacts. That's like the timeline. It all happens with about, within about five seconds. Uh, yeah, it was really crazy, Are you man. Fucking kidding me? <laughs> well, I came in the next morning and you and our post supervisor, Sam, uh, were both. I mean, Sam was like, Shane, I need your skepticism. You gotta make me feel okay about this. I wanna throw up right now. Uh, and you were very excited, and I was- Lizzie was excited too. Lizzie, our producer, Lizzie was, was very excited. excited. I was excited to see the clip, and I watched it, and I was like, well, I'm glad you guys are excited about that. Either way, I think- I, I, <laughs> Because it looks like absolute I, nonsense. I found, the, I found the evidence. I, I honestly, put it into the episode, <laughs> on, you know, the night before the, uh, the premiere in LA, which by the way, we are doing premieres of episodes for a, a couple episodes this season. Ghost Files Live, if you haven't heard about that, get your ticket. A lot of the cities are already sold out, but- That's true. Go um, check out, here's the dates. <laughs> go check them, check them, check them out. Everyone uh, in the theater seemed to react in a way that it looked like a- That's great. Though I've seen some comments already on YouTube who are like, I don't know what that was all about. I, I genuinely can't figure out, like, I know that you're spooked by the whatever's in the doorway. I, I don't know- It looks like a face to me. <laughs> I don't see a face there in at In fact, all. it looks so much like a face, you could see the two glints, which look like kind of lights. The glints? They, there looks like I have two eyeballs, because there's two, and then when the face turns, the lights go away, which is what happens when you turn away with your head, because the light's reflecting off your eyes. This could be a kitty cat man, right? Or just a normal man. Well, a normal man wouldn't have glowing eyes. No, but it wasn't glowing, it was more like Could it have been reflections. the creeper? It's called eye light machine. It could be the creeper, I don't know. It could be the creeper. Well, what do you guys think? I mean, it's you could see us bicker all day. Let us know in the comments if you uh, if you disagree. What did you, you find most compelling? You know, what other moment did we miss something? Huh? Let us know. Let us know if you think Shane has pebbles for brains and can't see evidence when it's kicking him right in the face. And uh, let me know if you think um, I'm the greatest investigator who ever lived. That those, those are the two options. I mean, I'm sure there's others, but those are the ones that come top of mind. Interesting. All right, well, onward. All right, enough of that. Let's move on to our next segment, Cutting Room Floor. This is a segment where we show you things that didn't make it into the episode, but we wish did make it into the episode. And today we have a very fun clip for you guys from Katie Deal, actually. She's one of the audience investigators who sent us a clip of evidence. It did not make it into the show because it was in the same location as another piece of evidence, but we could show it to you now and uh, we'll let Katie take it away. I was on the fifth floor in front of room 502 when I suddenly felt like somebody was watching me behind a doorway. Um, my camera hadn't been working all day, but I decided to try and snap a quick photo. And when I looked at the photo I had taken, there was a face. There were no windows, no mirrors, no lights, and no people around that could have caused it. So the only explanation, the ghost. We tried to recreate that photo. Didn't 
Nail it. How about this? First off, thank you, Katie. For oh, sending, yeah, thanks, say, thank Katie. you, Katie, for sending in the evidence. Thank you for recording the intro. I, I liked that project. evidence more than the other one where they were, uh, you know, what year? I don't know what year they recorded it in. It sounded like 1962 with the uh, quality of the audio recorder, but where they were like, is there anyone here? Yes, there's somebody here. <laughs> uh, and I'm not here to call anybody liars. Just indirectly. I'm, I'm not going to call people charlatans within the episodes. So we've, we've, we're trusting the people who submit these things. You're indirectly saying it right now. I am not. Here's what I, I think. Not. I believe they believe oh that what boy. they're submitting is a ghost. Here comes and, the Shane pull string doll again. I believe I, you believe, <laughs> I believe you believe. I, and uh, I believe in some of those more than others. And if you out there would, are considering s sending in evidence for future episodes, um, use an iPhone or um, you know, any piece of technology post-1992. I will say this. This is the last thing I'll say about this in regards to this, this little quandary. Say your piece. Here. I believe that... I believe. Here's what I believe. Hey. Okay? <laughs> hey, here's what I believe. Huh? When it comes to evidence, all these skeptics are always like, show me something that's very clear, undeniable, and then when they get it, their first response is always, well, that's fake. So what do you want? I don't understand what you want. Like, this is such a clear voice. Yeah, I just, here, here's the thing. I just don't trust a lot of these people. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Most skeptics don't. Unbelievable. Sorry. So basically what you're saying is if they send us the evidence, if we could replicate that in if the same way. If we could replicate way, it, I'd be thrilled. Then you'll owe an apology. Then I will owe an apology, yeah. And you'll, you'll get on your knees and apologize and yeah. crawl around in a little apology circle. Yeah, no, I mean, it would, I, will, I will do that. I'll crawl around in a little apology. I'm circle. sorry. <laughs> sorry, it's so dirty down here. Please accept it. Hey. Okay, moving right along to our last and final section, Qua. Q&A. I think it's just Q&A. This is where we answer questions directly from you guys, the viewers at home, including two questions exclusively from Patreon. Yeah, I'll plug it. Hey, head on over to patreon.com slash watcher. A better chance you'll get your question picked. You get early releases of episodes, a whole day early, and we're going to be doing some commentaries throughout the season. And well, these are hour-long great. episodes. This is a lot of commentaries. Where, where can I sign up for that? Patreon.com slash watcher, you my wait, dear isn't friend. Isn't that it right there? Oh, that's it right there. Holy wow. shit. Now, let's answer some questions. Look, here, I'll toss you a little softball here, Shane. This comes from Patreon. This is from Lentils36. For Shane, do you actually take any of these tools seriously as a form of getting evidence? As a Shaniac, they seem fun and totally add to the episode, but don't seem to add much in terms of scientific proof. Uh, they do add a lot of fun to the episode, but it's all pseudoscience bullshit. So no, I don't, I, there's no scientific value or merit to any of them. <laughs> Sorry, that's true. There, there I was just no... giving, I was giving lentils a long, hard stare. Oh, that's good. Thanks, Lentils. Let's hear you talk about the questions now, uh, funny man. Oh, oh, here's from K Kirsten 8 Thanks for your support. Uh, will you guys be having guests or other Watcher casts hunt with you? Uh, so far this season, we did not have anybody hunt with us, but we did have a guest who came to show their evidence because they did their own paranormal investigation. And you'll see that later in the season, our, our buddy Garrett Watts. Yeah. will come on to the show and a delightful man. You may have uh, seen him on uh, Puppet History. If you are a fan of Watcher content, he was a guest on that show as well. That's right. I don't know that Do we- Do you even watch Puppet History? I've heard it's good. I, I executive produce it. Um, that's true. I heard there was some- That's true. Some drama last season. Uh, I wouldn't say we're, we're ruling it out for the future. It's just, uh, it's tough to probably bring someone along for a ghost hunt. Someone like Garrett would obviously be great because he's done it. It, he's, yeah. a, he's a colleague in the field. Yeah, and he's also a fellow tall boy. Very tall man. Fellow in the sense that he's a fellow tall boy to you. Um, let's uh, hit some other questions. There you go. There's the iPad for you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's move on over to uh, Tube Town. Tube Town! That's YouTube for all of you who don't know. And we're going to grab a question from there. TT. <laughs> it's going to TT. Qua TT. Qua TT. TT Qua. TT Qua. Look, we've been up a long time getting the premiere ready. We're a little <laughs> no, loopy I'm right so now. I'm so tired today. Okay. okay, here we go. Ah, oh, this is a really good question. 
and I'd like to clear it up. Uh, this comes from Jesse Planter. There's a little leaf emoji, and uh, they say, how much of this is acting? Some of the recorded submissions feel scripted slash staged. Is there any truth to that, or am I being overly analytical? Now, I will say this. I could see why you would maybe think that. First off, obviously we're not, we're not acting. But in terms of the uh, audience submissions when it comes to the evidence, we asked them to explain the evidence and we asked them to do it under certain parameters. Make sure you explain the evidence in under 30 seconds. Make sure you say what happened. Make sure uh, you give a lead in to what happened maybe before and then what could lead into the clip. So it was kind of in a way where people would have to literally write down what they were gonna say so they could get it under 30 seconds so that we could use it in the episode. Kind of in the weeds there. In that sense, it doesn't come off maybe the most conversational. And yep. you also have to remember that these perhaps are some folks that don't make a living talking to a camera like me and this idiot. So, right. uh, um, yeah. So you can't fault them for that. Uh, th all the submissions are genuine though. They're, they're gen regardless of the uh, quality of the evidence, um, <laughs> the quality of the evidence. You're really fondling that evidence. <laughs> they're, uh, they, they assure us that what they are submitting is genuine and that their stories are, are true. Uh, from their experience. But Not that everybody a, can <laughs> ham it up like we can ham it up. That being said, I, I will say that it, that is a valid question. And I'm glad you asked it because I wanted to clear that up. Yeah. Uh, this comes from Christy Carnes. They say, for the debrief, is it still Shaniacs, Shitfish, and Bugaras, or will there be new nicknames for skeptics, fence straddlers, and believers? I will say this, for skeptics, it's still gonna be Shaniacs. For uh, believers, still gonna be Bugaras. And for fence straddlers, that's no longer gonna be Shitfish, it's gonna be Cowards, so. Um, you gotta pick a side. You gotta pick a side. You really do have to pick um, a side. Yeah, you know, those are our people. You're our people, you're on... And you're... get off the fence. That's not even a comfortable place to sit. You're sitting there with it going up your ass crack. That's not comfortable. Yeah, the... I I've guess cut... you could be sitting like this, in which case your feet would be more on one side, naturally. But I'm assuming you're sitting crack in the middle. On a picket. Kind of, so picket you split crack. yourself kind of symmetrically. Yeah, not, not ideal. If you want to be proper about it. Um, there's a... Uh, there's a lot of people who sometimes will tell us, oh, I'm kind of in between. And I think I've probably cut more people loose than you have, but if I hear that from someone who says, well, I'm mostly a Shaniac, but sometimes I, I'm like, well, then you're not, you're out, you're done, you're out of here. That's true. Get packing, hit the road. And I think as long as you kind of believe. And he needs the numbers, so. That's not true, that's not true. You saw all the evidence in this episode. He needs the numbers. You can't just point at me and smirk and say he needs the numbers and <laughs> make it seem like fast. Right. And you know what? Maybe I'm just more inclusive. Right. Thank you. Uh, let's go to a question from Twitter, Let's go Ryan. to Twitter. What are we going to call it? Tweet Twitter. down. Oh, so they're all TTs. Tweet down. Um, this is from Kayla. Do you think threatening to kidnap Timmy in a ghost net might have made him a bit hesitant to respond to you? I mean, if I'm him, I'm just happy I got adopted. He didn't see the net. And he didn't see my net. I don't think he would have been scared if he didn't see the net. If, it, if you had a big glowing net with like laser rope, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm still developing it. It's still an R&D. Yeah, it's back there. But it is a big ass net that kind of looks like the net that Isabel carries around in Animal Crossing. And when I get a ghost, the thing that we're really fine tuning in the lab right now, it's not so much the actual capturing, it's the noise that it makes. Cause I'm really trying to get it to make a nice thunk. Thunk. Yeah, you're not getting that yet. And That's not yet, not yet. So we'll get there. Well, that wraps up this investigation. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Ghost Files Debrief, and make sure you tune into the next episode of Ghost Files this Friday when we go to Alcatraz. What? That's right. Wow. And after you do that, make sure you comment with questions on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or Patreon for a better chance to be on the next episode of Ghost Files Debrief. We'll see you guys next week. Farewell.